Let's see who we have next. I'm so fired up from the past one. I'll turn my camera off on Andrew. Uh, uh, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Taurus Ross, 2278-82. Right, Mr. Ross, my name is Brennan Kelsey. I'll be cha the chair for the day, along with me as Ms. Pearl Wise and Mr. Tony Marabella will be your pro panel. Explain the process to you, review some information to the record, have a pro hearing, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. And we have uh, Ms. Aaron Harris and Ms. Tawanda Harris here. Uh, Mr. Wanda will make a statement at the appropriate time. We also have Andrew Hunley and Keith Nordyke at the appropriate time. Uh, and we have, there we have Tanya Anderson, uh, Gwendolyn Pound, Horace Hurd, Gloria Hurd. So thank you guys for being here. All right, Taurus Ross, DOC number 22788. Eight two, you're a third class offender. Roll eligibility date 628, 2016. Good time date 11, 21, 2063. Full term date 4, 5, 2067. Uh, seven years, six months, three, six days. <laughs> Aggravated battery, death, unauthorized. Entry of inhabited dwelling, possession of firearm, carrying concealed weapon by a person convicted of certain felonies, habitual offender, armed robbery, tipped armed robbery. Mm -hmm. Tracy is here. Mm -hmm. Tracy Barbera is here as well. She'll speak at the appropriate. All right. All right. Mr. Ross, how old are you? Um, 54. 54. How long have you been incarcerated? 26 years. And you had a hearing, uh, what was the last hearing you had? In, was it an 18? In 20, in 20, sir. 20, 20. Had one in 20. Okay. And so what you've been doing since your last hearing? Have you taken any classes? Have you gotten in any trouble? Have you, what you been doing? No, sir, I haven't gotten into trouble, but I have um, taken more classes. I've taken victim awareness and completed that. Um, I come here, I made pride um, since leaving Angola. I also, when I was in Angola, after coming out of my last hearing, I participated in the New Men Ministry, um, celebrating recovery. And as always, I participated in our um, drug treatment programs, um, substance abuse, so how long and how long you you've been there? As soon as you got denied, you went you went straight to DCI. Um, no, sir. I got denied, and um, I may have stayed in Angola about another year. I only been in DCI now about eight months, sir. About eight months. Okay. So, uh, what's your plans? If uh, I, and I happen to be on the panel before, so I'm uh, very familiar with the case. Obviously, looking over again. What uh, what your plans if you to be released? Where are you going to go? What you going to do? Well, um, I've contacted um, the Louisiana Parole Project, and um, I'm planning to go there and stay there for some time until I get myself together, you know, find a job, participate in more drug treatment programs, and just mm -hmm. take advantage of all the things I've learned since since my cause of racing. Yeah, uh, briefly tell me about the, uh, what were you uh, on drugs during this crime? Again, this was a bad crime. Uh, Bad situation. Tell me, tell me a little bit about it. Yes, sir. Drugs, um, drugs have been a part of my life for quite some time, which is why I plan to stay in recovery for probably for the rest of my life, sir. So, what caused you to to commit this crime? Was it drugs? Were you? What? what tell me a little bit about it. Um. Well, it was much trying to get some money, and bottom line, to pretty much buy some drugs. Um, we went. Into, I went into a bank. Me and three other guys um, demanded money from the bank tellers. Coming there with guns, printing guns at the teller, and you know, tried to get the money. 
And the bottom line, it was to go um, participate in some type of drug activity. What did you learn in victim awareness? What did you learn about, about, about what you did, how it affected everybody, the community, the victims, everybody around? Yes, sir. I do understand that, the, that my actions that day, the impact that it had on the victim, how my actions that day, how it affected their lives. Not only did it affect their lives, it affected their family lives. It affected the community, it affected society, it affected my family life, and I'm very much aware of that. I've taken responsibility for my actions. Um, in all the classes I take, I understand that 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 I could never pay my debt to society, that I'll forever be in, in, in debt to society, and I'm gonna always try to do everything I can to to be a better person. So what was your um, choice? What were you using out there when you were using? Um, when I was when I was on the street, my drug of choice was cocaine. You understand you'll have to be in treatment for the rest of your life. Yes, sir, I do. So, what do you currently do for the facility? Then, what do you do? Um, soon, I re um, arrived here at DCI. The first thing I did was um, I took up on a yard all the job, and I cut grass this whole summer. Um, I also participate in um, Pillars. There's an organization called Pillars over on the compound. And I also um, attained my prior certificate while being here at um, DCI in the eight months I've been here. Okay. Good. Yep. Sounds like you've been doing a lot more. You got any input for me? Uh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Kelsey. He, he, he's only been here since uh, March, I believe, but in that short period of time, he has done well of course you, you see the programming he has that pillars organization is a little group uh, that we have here like that they do a little gardening and learn how to be a man and stuff and he's a pride member but uh he's done well since he's been here all right great thank you all right we're here from uh andrew hunley andrew hunley louisiana parole project uh appearing today to confirm uh, that Taurus is a client of Louisiana Parole Project. If he is granted parole, uh, we'll accept him into our residential reentry program. Uh, the board's well aware of of the services we provide, but in particular, you know, we are uh, aware with uh, Taurus's substance abuse history. Taurus has been very open and honest with us about that history and has expressed a desire to uh, continue his recovery. So we would work uh, to connect him to a sponsor and ensure that uh, you know he's attending AA and NA meetings and he has the long-term support he needs uh, from peer mentors. Um, he will receive a minimum of one year of case management from us um, upon his release. Uh, and and I could just would like to say that you know we're aware he was denied parole two years ago. Uh, he, we're very impressed for the last couple of years. Uh, he's not only continued to remain right up free, but to be very active in his local community and continue his programming. We do think this is the sweet spot. It would be a good time to release him now while he's able-bodied and uh, can get employment. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, we're here for Ms. Tawanda Harris. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for speaking on behalf of my brother Torres Ross. Um, as you're aware, it's been a difficult journey for me and my family. Um, prior to Torres' incarceration, you know, we shed a lot of tears. We prayed, we hoped, and waited for this day, um, the man that he is right now. Uh, throughout the years, you know, I began to see a difference in Torres. You know, his conversation began to be different, his demeanor. Um, I recognize that he was comfortable now to discuss his failures, his faults, and he wanted to own up to that. Um, he began showing all the remorse, remorse and emotional impact that he had towards the victims, and he definitely regrets all the choices that he has made. Um, he no longer makes excuses, and he takes full responsibility for his acts, and I believe that. Um, Taurus was and is the time to transform himself. He has proven that um, going through different programs, even when he was transferred to DCI. He has um, refused to let his circumstances define the man that he wants to be. 
He has utilized the programs and resources that was provided to him, and he has made a choice to change. He continued contributed his growth and maturity of his faith to God. That is very important to our family. Um, you know, he has strayed away, but he has came back. You know, he is proud of the man that he is. He is not the same man that he was 26 years ago. Um, I believe Torres will be a productive citizen and give back to the community. And he understands that his commitment that he made in prison to change, he has to continue that commitment throughout his life. Um, we are here. We will be there 100%. My husband is here, my mother, my stepfather. He will be surrounded with um, very positive men and women that has great contributed to this community. Um, I'm proud of him. I'm not going to stand here and be shy that I am proud that the man that he has. Because we have seen a totally different Taurus. Um, I've watched my mother five million nights. Me and Dave work hard to bring to the bone to try to give us the life that um, he wants to live, that I live. I want him to have that and feel that he deserves that. He deserves a second chance. And I just thank you so much for now to speak. All right, thank you so much for your comments. All right, uh, Ms. Tracy, are you? All right, go ahead. Make a comment, Ms. Barbera. I'm trying. There we go. All good, right, there we go. Good morning. Oh. It's nice to see all y'all. Um, I'm just, you know, Mr. Ross remembers me. I know he does. Uh, we go back a long way. And um, one of the victims who was, I will say, deeply emotionally impacted by this. And I know the board has read her letter. I'm not going to mention her by name, but she has been very vocal throughout this process. And she lives with this every day. And I know Mr. Ross has done everything the board asked him to do after the last hearing. I am very grateful for that. I pray that Mr. Ross completed these classes because he truly wants to change himself and not just so he can get out of the Department of Corrections. He, he's younger than I am. I consider myself to still be young. He, uh, he said he was 54 and uh, Andrew, or excuse me, Mr. Hunley mentioned that he's able-bodied for employment. He's also able-bodied to find drugs and reoffend. So if it is this board's decision to let him out today, I ask for the strictest parole conditions that you possibly can impose. He had a bad uh, disciplinary record um, for years while incarcerated. And um, I mean, I'll just be frank, he scares me. And if you decide to let him out, I hope he is a, a model parolee and I hope that the victim can um, get through this. I know it's if you let him out, it's going to be an extremely emotional event for her. We will continue to be there for her to help her through this. And um, I know the board is going to make the right decision, but I, I had to, I had to speak today on her behalf to stress how emotional this whole experience because this wasn't just pointing guns. This was there was physical contact with these victims and uh, which is a much more, if there's such a thing as a more serious degree of armed robbery than I think it was. So thank you. Good morning. Thank, thank you so much for your call. Thank you. Hi, right, Mr. Ross, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank this board for allowing me this opportunity to present myself. Um, I'm very, much aware of everything Ms. Ewan had to say just now. And um, I'm deeply, deeply, deeply remorse for the, any, any harm I've caused to the victim, any harm I've caused to um, Ms. Donna Burke, um, everyone that was involved in that, in the robbery of the bank that day. I mean, I, I try everything I can to better myself, to become a better person. And I can say that I'm not the same person that I was 26 years ago. I've exercised and I've, I've taken classes and I've did everything I can to, to better myself. Uh, when I was in New Men Ministry, that was, that was a program I took in Angola. And 
the one of the creed was that um being a faithful, loving, obedient children of God, being kind, generous, give, expecting nothing back, telling the truth, being responsible. And that's something that I try to live by, something I try to pattern myself self behind. Um in, in substance abuse, it's not a day go by that I don't wake up and I ask God to grant me serenity, to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the will to know the difference. It's one thing that I know that I do, I have come to realize that regardless of how I may be feeling, regardless of how I may be thinking, regardless of what may be going on in my life, I understand that it's me, that I am responsible for my own actions. And I know that every decision I make, everything I do, it affects someone else. It don't just affect me. And that's one thing I've come to identify, understand, and have come to realize. And in and, and those terms, it's things that I've come to in life to know. And I will continue to I will continue to participate and utilize everything I've learned here, everything I've learned in the classes I take, and I will continue to apply those things in my life and to becoming a better man and becoming a better person, doing everything I can to help help myself, to help society. I understand that you could say that um being part of being part of the, the, the um not to not do nothing to help everything that's going on out there is just like being part of the problem. And I want to try to be part of the solution out there. I understand that I can be of some help to some of the youth up out there, that I can talk to them and try to lead them down the right path. Cause I know what it looked like. I know what it feel like. I know what drugs brings into a household. I know how it tears a household up. I know how what it looked like, what it feels like. And I feel like I could pass some of the things I learned. I could pass it on to the youth out there. And I do plan to participate in that. All right. Thank you so much for your comment. Thanks, Mr. Nordyke. Would you like to wrap it up? I will. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time hammering on the things he's done because he's done a tremendous amount in the last several years. I'm very, very proud of where Taurus has gone. Taurus is, is somebody I've been representing now for, I want to say, six years, maybe even longer. Uh, we go a long way back, and uh, I can speak a little bit to the transformation and the change that Taurus has gone through. Uh, the Taurus I first met had picked up a write-up or two and is not the Taurus you see today. Taurus has matured. He's changed. Uh, I can specifically recall some conversations with him in the A building at Angola that just uh, sort of rocked me, the changes that he's gone through and made. You can't change the offense ever. And, you know, with with all due respect, there's not a thing he can ever do to change that. He can change the man that, that's there, and he's done that. Um, the commitment that he has to substance abuse recovery is fairly remarkable. Uh, sometimes I have to prompt people to talk to me about that. He talks to me about that. So I think that's a, that's a very favorable thing. Mr. Hundley talked about the sweet spot. And at this age, 54 years old, I think it is a sweet spot for him to be able to get out and earn a living, get those quarters of Social Security that he needs uh, so that he can not be a, a burden on society at a later date. He's not a recent convert. He's been doing this journey for a while. And I would ask the board, and, and I, I don't disagree with Ms. Barbera on conditions on parole. I think that's probably appropriate. But I do think that the parole project will handle that for the board in many, in many respects. They're going to they're gonna make sure he goes to AA or NA. They're going to make sure he gets a sponsor and make sure he does right. So I would ask the board to, to grant the parole to the parole project with the conditions uh, as suggested. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a fair to vote? Yes. I'll vote first. Uh, Mr. Ross, yeah, I was, I was on your parole board uh, last time. I, I actually was, uh, I denied you last time. And I, and I wanted you to, I made a note here, I wanted to see how you were going to respond you know, to, to some uh, you know, bad news. You know, you, 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 it was a terrible crime you've done. You've done a lot of work, but you know, you, you, you had some discipline issues. You had some poor supervision, which is, again, not going to go away. But I want to see how you were going to respond. In, in the last two years, you know, you've responded well. You, you, 
worked hard, you've put in a lot of time and effort, you've taken a lot of classes, you really uh, try to better yourself. I think you're, uh, you know, you're at that, at that point. Uh, for me today, I'm going to grant your parole. Um, I want you to have NAA three times a week. I want you to have no contact with the victim. I want you to have community service six hours per month. So give back to, to you know, you, you help folks out that are kind of in your situation. Give back to the community. I want you to have random drug screens, and I want you to have a curfew from 9P to 6A, unless you're a worker at church, okay? I'm just one vote. Do you understand the stipulations? Yes, sir, I do. All right, Ms. Wise. Uh Mr. Ross, I, I look back at your record, and uh, you might not even remember this. Back in 1994, you went to Blue Water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're a different person. To, you, you know, we, you know, I just wanted to put that on your mind. That and like, and I just, um, what really got me is what your sister said today. They know you can't. You might fool us, but you can't fool your family. I don't believe you would support you today if you hadn't shown some uh, some changes. You just got to keep it up. My vote is to grant as well the Louisiana Parole Project, uh, and I concur with all the conditions set for uh, uh, Mr. Kelsey. Best wishes to you, sir. Mr. Maribel. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Ross, uh, I, I hope that in all your classes and all the hard work that you've done, you do realize the pain and grief that you have caused your victim. They, many of them can't get over it. It's, it's a pain that they'll have to live with for the rest of their lives. I hope you've learned. Sounds like you have. You've worked very hard. Uh, my vote today, likewise, would be to grant uh, to the parole project, uh, just as Mr. Nordyke has pointed out. We want to make sure that they strongly encourage you to, to make sure that you go to your AA meetings and, and that you stay clean and sober. You certainly have no contact whatsoever with any victims of this case. So good luck to you. Three votes to grant your parole. Your parole's been granted. You understand stipulations? Yes, sir, I do. All right, good luck to you. Thank the board. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, you see the warden shake his hand, give him a high five, their family there. I understand there's victims in here, but I like it. I like the decision. I can get behind the man who did an armed robbery of a bank, didn't shoot anyone. I understand it was violent and scary and traumatic, but um, seems that he's earned his way out, and uh, I am happy with the decision personally. Look at him and his family. It's amazing. Think of what it's going to be like for him to go home, have a home-cooked meal, or just go to, like, McDonald's. Have a steak, maybe a beer. I don't know if he has a drink. I don't think he has a drinking problem. Um, pick, pick which channel he wants to watch on TV. Watch the sunrise and set. Look at the sky with the stars in it, moon. And I don't mean to get all like uh, hippie on you, but just like all these little things, you know. I wonder how long it takes to get out. Do you get out that day, or is it like a long process? Okay. Looks like we got a one, two, three, four on the calendar. Medical parole, that's always intense. 